don't know if you guys saw the new dev video or not, but there were some key takeaways from that video that I want to emphasize to you right now. So you may have watched it, you may not have watched it. Even the people who watched it may not have realized the significance and importance of some of the things that I'm about to tell you uh, in this video. So I picked out the most important things that they said because there was a lot of stuff that was either repeat information or was just not really important. Like them saying, oh yeah, we're going to fix that thing where you can drown on water. Like nobody actually really cares that much about that, right? So I cut through all the crap. I'm just going to go ahead and get straight to the point here on each one. And to kick it off, we're going to start with bots. Now, I know some of you are furious about bots, and some of you are like, why does he care so much about, about, about bots? I don't care about bots personally, but I know a big chunk of the community does, so that's the only reason I focus on it a decent amount on this YouTube. So let's see what they had to say about bots. We're always invest investigating um, bots and different bot programs, and uh, we work with our partners at uh, Easy Anti Cheat mm -hmm. so that um, they can identify signatures for some of these things and uh, EAC can handle uh, identifying and banning uh, machines that are using these bot programs as well. And so I think since the last time we talked, I think maybe about 9,000 or so uh, bot accounts have been actioned on. Awesome. Um, yeah, and then uh, I think maybe about 600 more just that uh, were running programs maybe we haven't identified, but that we've, we've banned as well just through investigation. So I don't know if you caught that or not, but their primary focus for banning bots is trying to have it detected automatically using easy anti-cheat and they banned basically 9,000 bots where they didn't do anything it was automatic is what that sounded like to me as for how many bots actually got banned because of us reporting them apparently that was 600 and I think they meant 600 since the last dev blog video so when was the last dev blog video? I took a look at their YouTube and their last dev blog video was about one month and two days. So about 32, 33 days ago. So why does that matter? Well, they said 600 bots in, I guess around 33 days. Although the recording for the second one, they even said where they're back in time. So they might've recorded that a week ago. So let's give them some leeway. Let's say, 20 days since that video was when they were recording what we just watched that would mean that only 30 bots get banned per day from them actually looking into our reports and banning them manually so i don't know if that sounds like a lot to you or if that sounds like a little bit to you to me personally that sounds like a very very small amount to me uh considering that on my server there are probably at least 100 bots that are all the way to level 60 and have never been banned. So I'm not sure if it's just that hard for them to figure out if it's a real bot or not or what the issue is, but the amount of bots they ban per day on average manually is actually pretty abysmal. Thankfully, the easy anti-cheat is doing the work for them, doing, you know, doing God's work for them and getting 9,000 bots in the same amount of time uh, but if one for the easy anti-cheat, we would literally have like 50% of our player base being bots because their manual actions, I don't know, I don't reference one. Maybe that is fantastic, but it's still not enough. But let's move on to the next topic. So the other one is, I, I, it's going to be on a similar subject before we move on to the next topics, is that unfortunately it sounds like what I had theorized about on a previous video may actually be true. So I made a video about why mass reporting actually works and actually can get players banned. Now, that video was about how I accidentally got someone banned by using their Discord name in my video, which led to them getting mass reported, which led to them getting a permanent ban right off the bat with no chance of repercussion. It was a whole different story. I'm not going to go into it. You know, they appealed a million times, never went through. And now my belief was that what happened was because that person got mass reported, they immediately investigated because they're like, look at all these people are, are uh, reporting, so we need to take a look into this guy. And when they looked into the person, it was just some crappy support person like we've all been familiar with where they, they a lot of times they barely even speak English. It sounds like they apparently do have people like that being the arbiters of who gets banned or not. Now, not 100% on this, but it, made it sure made it sound like it based on what they said. And why does that matter? Well, in that guy's case, he was in the company that owned Windsward and Everfall, so they had just given him tons of money and traded tons of high-value items around like it was nothing. So that triggered the telemetry-like triggers 
And so when a report guy, some crappy support guy saw it, he just banned because he was like, oh, it triggered some triggers and he got mass reported, banned and didn't even, didn't even look into the case. That's my assumption, right? That's my assumption. Well, based on what I'm about to show you, that assumption looks like it may actually be correct. So here is what they said about like a little bit of what they said they, about how they uh, do the, you know, reports leading the ban stuff. They didn't mean to like directly tell us, but they basically did. So take a look at this. So we've done a lot of work in getting that telemetry data uh, more easily accessible to a customer service so that uh, when they do get a report, they can say like, oh, and this, this player has already like triggered these alarms or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so we can actually move quicker as well. So if we heard that right, they send the telemetry data to the customer support team, which also makes me believe based on the way he said it, that what I thought may actually be right. The customer support team is like outside of their own jurisdiction. It's a different company that they're outsourced to. Now that may be wrong. That's my speculation, but that's, that really made it seem like that based on the way he said that. And also it definitely inferred that the customer service representatives or someone above them, but in that same area are the ones looking at the telemetry data triggers to see, did you trigger some kind of automatic thing saying you're sus? And then they are the arbiters are choosing the, yes, you should get banned. And you, should you even respond to this person's request for unbans? Yes or no. And all these little factors, like I've seen in European data request forms that people have shown me before where they've asked her the data on why they got banned and stuff. So there's a lot to it, but it does seem likely that mass reports can work. If you have any kind of triggers already triggered, for any kind of activity in the game, like you traded high level items and that type of stuff, and you could get screwed. So that is very interesting. Uh, as for why it matters, I, I don't know. It just sucks for the one guy, but I think you guys should be aware of that. Uh, that was a really interesting thing you may have missed in the dev video. So now let's move on to the next topic, desync. You guys all may be familiar with desync, especially if you've been in wars or OPRs or duels in high population areas. Well, they are apparently working on that although most of that might get hammered out in the February uh, release. So they're gonna have a PTR in February, and that is where they're mainly gonna be working on bugs. And they, they om omitted the word bots this time, which has me nervous, but they said bugs and I forget what the other word was, basically issues with the game, like weird things. So they had something to say about the uh, desync issues and why it's a little more complicated than it may seem and what they, like where they're at basically on what they're doing about it and, and there's the whole situation in general. So let's, let's take a look at that. It's important for players to realize it's there's not like a desync issue, right? That's like causing everything. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a bunch of different little changes that have caused the, you know, the server and the client to sort of be mismatched. And, and they've got a team now focused on this and they're going through them one by one. They're trying to fix the most onerous ones first, the worst ones, and then go down the list. But it's gonna take a while to get them all out. But uh, I think, you know, it is a focus now and they're working on the, the big ones up front. So they're aware of the desyncs. Every single desync that you see for the most part is caused by its own specific set of issues. Uh, I might guess would be generally there's a patch and they try to change something like how now they made it to the bow can't do something for a double shot or super speed attack or whatever. And when they make that fix, maybe it makes some issue then where if you're using poison shot when somebody roots you and going for a sidestep or something, then the client gets confused and sends the wrong signal or gives you a bad different signal than what you saw and then it desyncs and it puts you back in time or you know it's all comes down to nitty-gritty stuff like that so they're working on it as fast as they feel like they can i'm assuming february is when they're gonna hammer out most of those and there may be some after that that they'll still be working on I mean, it might just be a work in progress forever right because you know how this game is they fix some things and it just breaks a ton of other things and that's just generally how this game kind of is so it's a work in progress but hopefully they'll hammer out a big chunk of those in the February release. But moving on to the next topic, the blunderbuss. So the blunderbuss is their main focus right now, apparently. Now, I don't know that it'll be out by February. Uh, not sure, based on the way you said it. It's probably gonna be February or March, though. So we will see. But they're doing a lot of internal play testing on it. And here's what they had to say about the blunderbuss. Blunderbuss is, yep. is, is gonna be the next weapon we're yep. releasing. Uh, we're, we're heavily working on that. We're playing it a lot internally in the team. It's super fun. Uh, definitely brings a new play style to ranged weapons. So uh, we're working on that on future weapons. So that's the main focus of the team right now. So like I said, judging from that, it'll probably be February or March. It's hard to say, but they did say it's their main focus right now. So it's hard to say, but that's the update right now. That's all we know. So again, one last time, February or March is what I'm expecting.
With that being said, let's move on to the next one, though, which is the weapon swapping issues. A lot of you, especially if you've done PvP, you may have realized that there are sometimes weird issues with weapon swapping, where you swap a weapon, and it doesn't feel like it didn't actually swap to your weapon. You thought you were on a life staff, or now it wasn't. It was actually on the other weapon. Or I even had, at one point, there were issues where it would show you holding the wrong weapon and then attacking with another. There's all sorts of issues with weapon swap. Well, apparently that is a focus that's actually going to be something that's addressed in the February PTR. And here's what they had to say about that. So in our next PTR, we're going to actually have an update for the players to try out. Um, we have a uh, back tick check on our weapon swap now that's going to really help with uh, the confirmation that you have weapons done a swap basically so when you hit that button you're going to know that swap is going to occur and it's going to be much more reliable than it has been in the past it is important to note though that we do not have instant cancels in for our swaps uh, that is a big uh, big topic for us and something we're not ready to tackle at the moment it's uh, quite a game changer if we did that right now so uh, you will still have to wait for the windows for the weapon swap but it will be queued up correctly now so hopefully that goes well and then we won't have to deal with weapon swap issues anymore although he did say something weird there about i if i heard that right like someday they're going to make weapon swap instantaneous or maybe he just meant that uh that's not something they want to do and that's not something they want to address and they're just that they're not going to do that that was kind of confusing uh maybe someday we'll have instant weapon swaps i'm not entirely sure but either way hopefully fingers crossed hopefully all of the wacky ass interactions with weapon swaps will be fixed by the end of february but with weapon swaps being fixed, you may have something new to try them on in the future. Although they said longer term, so I'm thinking if this comes through, it'll probably be more towards summer, maybe end of summer. Uh, is that kind of what they made it sound like? So they definitely are looking at making casual versions of wars and invasions to give more players the, I think he said, back of box experiences in the game. So if you ever wanted to be in a war, but you never get slotted because in your server, they only slot the same 50 people every time. Someday in the future, you may finally get a chance to do wars in a more casual format, which I think sounds awesome. I personally hope it has a, something to do with influence war battles so that there's some other way to do influence. Not sure that what it'll be. I'm sure they don't even know what it'll be yet, but here's what they had to say about it. Yeah, and I think longer term, um, no commitment to time or anything here, but We'd love to see casual versions of each of those to get more players the opportunity to try, you know, some of our back of box features like War and Invasion. I think mm -hmm. that'd be really cool. And it's, I have a lot of fun playing them, so I'd like to get more people in there. Honestly, I wish those features had been out since launch. Cause I feel bad for all the thousands, if not tens of thousands of players who wanted to do wars and never got slotted for them literally ever and ended up quitting the game before it ever happened. So hopefully at some point, uh, that will be a thing. I agree with that as an idea. I really hope they implement that at some point. But let's move on to a topic that some of you may be extremely excited about. Not all of you, but a lot of you will be extremely excited to hear this. So they are on board for PvP arenas, at least. I'd love to see more than just arenas, but even arenas, that I'd, I'm down. Uh, as for a time frame, eh, I'm not sure. Based on the way they said it, maybe April through... June maybe at the earliest or maybe they'll just put it off for a long ass time and it may never come around but uh, probably not February probably not March maybe uh, it's hard to say based on the way they talked about it but here's what they had to say about PvP arenas I mean it's pretty early to talk about them but I think right. you know uh, arenas is something that we're looking into I think if we do it uh, or when we do it it will you know likely be in a phased approach right like we you know we will release an early version of it that may not be as fully featured and will mm -hmm. continue to grow it over time. So they said if we do it, or I mean when we do it, so kind of some, you know, I'm not sure what to think about that. Makes it sound to me though that they want to do it. They're probably going to do it. There was some follow-up talk after that that also kind of made it sound like they're probably going to do it. So expect PvP arenas hopefully by summer, I'm hoping. Fingers crossed. But that is definitely down the, coming down the pipeline, so I'm excited for that. That's definitely some news to, uh, from that dev blog that really matters to me personally. I would love to see a ranked PvP mode in this game. But with PvP out of the way, let's talk about some transfers, right? World transfers, world merges, stuff like that. Whatever happened to those worlds that got forked? Remember those, those random ones that got left behind? And they have, they're probably just dead now. I feel bad for those guys. 
Um, so they couldn't do that because of a housing persistence issue that was going to blow up everyone's housing and make people lose their houses. So that is why those worlds got left behind, to the best of my knowledge. And they have a fix coming around the corner. I don't know that they said when. But once that fix goes out, then they're going to be looking at a second round of transfer tokens. And by second round, I mean you are going to get a second transfer token. I don't know if the first one you have will disappear or if you'll have two backed up. But if you used yours already, you can expect another one coming. Here's what they had to say about that. So once we're done with uh, 1.5, the round 1.5 of merges, then we will open up the second round of character transfer tokens so for the player initiated Okay, ones. so it's going to be a second token and not just the first token people may have been sitting on. And yeah. I think that so there you have it. You're going to get a second token once they figure out those last mergers. Also, if you're on one of those dead servers, uh, you're finally going to get merged into the other ones. So that's good news for a lot of people. I'm excited to see that. And I'm going to move on to the next topic. So housing taxes. I don't know if you guys have played long enough. Some of you have. I don't know if you've played long enough to experience housing taxes before the reduction for the holidays. But the reduction for the holidays is going to be ending. Although, when they end it, they are not going to return it to what it used to be. So um, I think I already touched on this in a previous video. But I'm going to... They kind of reaffirmed it here. And in case you're not familiar, I'm going to get you up to speed. So they're going to pick kind of a middle ground between where the taxes are now and where the taxes used to be. So you're not going to pay as much as you did before the update, but you are going to pay more than you were during the holiday tax, whatever you call it, levy. <laughs> Is that what they call it? Um, so yeah, your taxes will be cheaper. And they're also going to reduce the maximum amount that people can raise taxes to for housing to kind of deal with tyrants on random servers who just always raise taxes to max that won't have as big of an impact now but it'll still be worse than it is now probably so we'll have to see on that but here's what they had to say about that we have the uh, housing tax change so before we had the housing tax everyone felt everyone the players felt it was too high yeah we've given a huge reduction in cost in that for, through the through the holiday time mm -hmm. now we're going to come back and put the cost uh, where we think it is and it's not going to be as high as it was and it's not going to be as low as it's been discounted to we think it's going to be a happy medium that works for everybody so like i said a happy medium that everybody will hopefully be happy with, sort of. I think a lot of people would love to have their taxes stay where it is now. Also, I'm sure companies would love to continue to use the tax duplication exploit to generate gold out of thin air. But, you know, things are going to be returning to normal at the end of this patch cycle, and taxes are going to be lower afterwards. But it doesn't quite end there. We got one more thing for you here. So, apparently, there's a bug. Although there's a bug. It's not apparently, but apparently they're going to fix the bug. There's a bug where you can't progress your faction status. So, like, you need to go to Commander, which is rank 5, but you're stuck at rank 4. Well, apparently what causes that is if you swap to another faction, and then at a later date, you swap back to the faction you came from. That is apparently what triggers it. And it makes it so you can't gain faction reputation anymore. You can't get to Commander rank. You can't buy Asmodium Chisels. You can't do any of that stuff. And apparently, they're going to fix that. Here's what they said about that. There was an issue blocking... Uh uh, if you swap back to your original faction, you couldn't progress to get to the, the top rank anymore. Um, so that will be fixed. So for any of you out there who were affected by that bug, that is going to be fixed. Um, I think that is going to be fixed in the... Was that? I think it was the January patch at the end here in a week, maybe. I'm not sure, though. It'll at least be fixed by the end of February at the latest. I, I actually don't remember what they said about that specifically. I'm not sure if they did say, actually. I think, I think it was January, though. Okay, sorry if I don't have that correct, though, but... Uh, yeah, so that's going to be fixed either sooner or later, but it's going to be fixed in the next month at the latest. And yeah, so that is everything that you may have missed in that dev blog video. Those were the key takeaways. Those were the things that you may have just skipped over if you tried to sit there and power through the whole 37 minutes or whatever it was. Um, so yeah, some good changes coming. Blunderbuss coming soon, probably March, maybe February, you know, a lot desync fixes in february february is just gonna be about bugs and desync issues and stuff like that they omitted the word bots this time which kind of has me scared but we will see also like i said bots apparently the way they banned them was every way that i had imagined potentially that's what it seems like not good but okay and that they're banning bots at a not blistering pace at all when it comes to manual review but they are banning bots from manual review at a snail's pace sort of that's you know but yeah, lots of good things, though. I just focused on the bad things there for a second. But, you know, lots of good things. I'm excited for a lot of these changes that are coming out. Uh, I think New World's heading in the right direction. I think that every time that I see updates like this, and uh, I'm glad they are doing these dev blog updates, 
it helps a lot for us to understand where their heads are at, where they're thinking, like, what can we expect longer term, give us some insight. You know, it, it was just, it was a good video. I would recommend watching that video if you have the time, if you want to watch it in its entirety. There's a lot of stuff I skipped because a lot of it wasn't, like, you know, the juicy details of, oh, yeah, this big thing coming out or whatever, you know. But there was more there than what I, I showed you. I just showed you the biggest highlights, right? So I'll link that video in the description of this video below the first paragraph. If you want to go check out the official video, it, all of its entirety of 37 minutes. And if you found this video helpful, you could consider subscribing to this YouTube for more New World content and stuff. Also, if you want to keep up with me for my socials, Discord, Twitch, or Patreon, links are also in the description somewhere. But yeah, that's it for this update. Um, that is what they had to say. Those are the biggest takeaways. I'm excited for the future of this game. And yeah, it's just a good dev blog. I think they did a good job. Very professional. Good stuff there. And lots of key takeaways for us to go home with. So we can be excited about where New World is heading.